So today is really talking about transitional shag. So this is the deal. I think I, you know, I love a shag. I know many people who cut them excellent and beautiful and the whole thing. But I'm getting a lot of this in my chair where people are like, what's next? And not on a trendy kind of, you know, TikTok-y kind of way. No offense to all y'all out there. Um, but the truth is, is that people are looking like to transition something a bit more from this, but still keeping the family, right? So one of the things that we are really thinking about, so I talked to Katie earlier and we were saying, you, the thing you don't love about your shag is when it gets like a little bubble Exactly. All in here, right? So that the layers perhaps get too long, and, and they just yeah, it's, it's they all collect together in the same all spot. Collect together in the same spot, and so one of our thoughts is, well, let's layer this in a different way. But I'm actually going to be leaving out some of this stuff because in here, when I'm looking at this, I'm like, okay, well, if this gets shorter. And lands here I'm gonna get that bubble defect mm -hmm. right so I'm actually gonna be leaving stuff out and I used to have an issue like every hair needs to be cut right now the whole thing it makes me a bad hairdresser and I cut every little strand of hair but I'm like what makes me a good hairdresser in my mind is the ability to assess what needs to stay versus what needs to go in contributing to the overall vision of what we're trying to create so that is really where my head is lean towards. It's like that old saying, it, it's not what you cut off, it's what you leave on. That exactly. makes a great haircut, right? Exactly. It's... So we're gonna actually start off, and this might be quick y'all, so sorry. But this is the thing. Also another thing is when I think about shags, I think about a very soft like edge. It's a little more feathery and like Katie is a graphic designer and so we <laughs> actually want to create something that's a little more graphically interesting. So a little stronger edges today? Yeah. And is that why you're starting off with the scissor like in the fringe area? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So one thing that I had a friend here a while back and they were asking me about these photos and about the bangs and all that stuff and how we created something that just looked kind of interesting. And so I'm actually grabbing this entire section. It's a, it's a pretty big, deep triangle. How did you yep. decide how much to take here? Because I'm really looking at what's gonna be in here. And then also I'm looking at the fact that there's a little bit of a jump in here in this hairline. And so I know that I need some of that to stay on top of it. So more weight will help to control the, the cowlick and help the hairline? Help to control that. So if I get a little too skinny, this is gonna really pop forward. Because it'll have no weight behind exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm going to go in here and I'm just going to look at all this stuff. I'm gonna bring all this out, right? So inherently I'm kind of like slightly layering this because I'm bringing You're elevating, this, right? this yeah. out. So that's the softness that I wanna see, but then this. So is, just elevating, but then kind of blunt cutting will give you a nice balance between the soft line and the strong line. Exactly, and the difference is too, because of the fact that um, Katie has these jumps, this is what the erraticness, I don't need to create that in the ends. It's gonna be supported by the fact that the yeah. roots are gonna be jumping yeah. all over. So you the elevated, you use a little tension and yep. then let the hair just spring back. And just let it do whatever it's gonna do. Now I'm gonna move into the sides here and I'm looking out for some of this stuff over here, right, where that starts to curve. So that's a good indicator to me that this, where does this want to go? And then I'm going to bring this here. Would you say that you're over directing that a little bit? Like building a little, a little weight a in the corner? A light little over yeah. direction. So it gets a, just a little bit of length in the corner. And it also, this gets a little square. Mm. So it's a slight one. So in these transitions, I have to think about like, I'm dealing with something that has already been a shag. So there's not a ton of room if somebody doesn't want to lose all the, all the length, right? So where are the little places that are going to start to shift this? So typically in a shag, we look at that shape and it angles very low down here. So by cutting that little corner a little bit shorter, I'm shifting this just enough that I feel like we're going to get into that place that just becomes a little bit different while this is moving forward. Yeah, I love that just a little bit of strength can totally transform something, oh. especially, you know, if the strength hasn't been there for a while. Yep, exactly. So, we're going to get strong today. 
day, hon. And Katie, how long have you worked for Hair Story? Only six months, actually. And you're in graphic design? Yes. Awesome. I have a, I'm like a, uh, you know, they say like I'm a kitchen beautician. I'm like a ki kitchen graphic designer. Right. Yeah. I think, awesome. I think it's fair. I think they're so similar, right? Don't you? I always thought like if I wasn't a hairdresser, I would have loved to have been a graphic designer. Oh, cool. Did you go to school and everything to, yeah? Yeah. Um, for illustration, actually. Okay, but, cool. Yeah. Fun brand to work for? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I yeah, you get to do some cool stuff with their design. Absolutely, and all the products, of yeah, course. Of course, that's a perk. Okay, coming into the side. So I noticed you pre-section the side out too, yeah. the hairline here. So one of like Katie's requests was, I don't want to get too mullety, right? <laughs> like it's like, and I hear that a lot, except for when I hear people go. Oh, I want a mullet, yeah. <laughs> well, it's it's no, there's no in between. It's right. either I really want a mullet, or please don't ever give me a mullet. Totally. Yeah, there's no like I kind of mullety's okay. Yeah, so this is the deal. So I, what I'm thinking is, if we want, actually, this is the thing. You are the hybrid. You are the person that's like, I don't mind. I'm okay with like a little mullet. A little mullet. Really? Okay, so, well, I stand corrected. So this is the thing. So my thought is, how are we going to build this thing so that we can create that as an option without not feeling like a hair trap? And by mm. hair trap, I mean, this is the look, this is it, boom. So the reason why I'm going right into here, and I'm going to just take this section, because this section is gonna start to be my little cool piece that if she tucks, we're gonna get that little mullet vibe, but I'm gonna keep this longer behind here so that I don't get into a space where I'm like. So that that separation, how far back it goes is kind of crucial, right? If absolutely. you wanted like hardcore mullet, you'd maybe take it back to the back of the ear. Absolutely, and mm -hmm. the thing is too, when I think about mullets, because a lot of people, um, because you have such a diverse audience, meaning that like you got people all over. Mm -hmm. You got people thinking about going to beauty school, you got people in beauty school, you got people who've been doing it a long time. And the thing that I tell kind of like, um, what I used to tell my uh, like apprentices a long time ago was, think about it like this. If the front, if you cut like this, we get the mullet. If you cut like this, we get the frame. It. Right. That's the difference. Between it's such a subtle thing. And so many people still don't quite have success with that, you know, where it's like, yeah, if you keep your sections more vertical, it's harder to like lose the length quickly. You have to really work for it. Where if you go straight back diagonal, you could lose all the length in one shot. Exactly. Bye. For those of you just joining us, we're here at the Hair Story Studio. You can see our good friend Wes Sharpton working on his model Katie. Um, I do want to shout out to say, um, if you want and you're interested in Hair Story, a great way to start is to try new wash. And we will put a link up here, um, or if you're already on our mailing list, you've already gotten the link, to get some new wash for free to just try it out and see what that's all about, and how it can transform your client's hair. I love me some new wash, honey. I haven't used shampoo in like forever on my clients. Like so like, well, what's the difference? So I, you know, we know that there's no detergents or mm -hmm. anything. How does that change the hair? So um, essentially the way that this works is this. I, like many hairdressers out there, spent most of my career just saying, hey, just don't shampoo that much. Yeah. And the thing that I love about new wash is it's no longer my responsibility to train my client to change their behavior. Mm -hmm. The product has changed to suit a behavior. Changes the effect, right? Yeah, so at the end of the day, what detergent does is it is, I'm gonna get a little technical while we're doing this whole thing, but what it really does at the end of the day is it bonds to oil and it bonds to water and an equal charge. Um, that just really strips everything away. That's that kind of squeaky version of it. But when we're talking about new wash, it actually bonds uh, to oil really well, but it bonds to water weaker. So it leaves a little bit of that protective oil that Katie naturally produces honey. That's why everybody says, when you go, you look great, they're like, I haven't shampooed in this long. Mm -hmm. um, we're creating that effect on day one, but the scalp still feels really good. So I love the, I love not having to have it. And I don't like having real poofy, poofy hair. So I don't, I'm not a big fan of shampoo. 
All right, so you picked up the razor now after you did your, your little shaping around the face. Just coming in vertically right behind that bang. I'm going to get the narrow section right. So I want a wide section. The reason why I'm thinking about things being wide is when I think about something that I want to create a natural effect. That means that there's going to be, um, there's going to be a stroke, but I can also create that by over directing. Let's just get a good idea of how yeah. wide that is. So this. <clears throat> Probably about is, an inch and a half yep. or so, right? So this section in here in the center is going to inherently be a little bit shorter than the ones traveling over to the side. So. And then I'm going to also broaden my stroke. So the, the way that you're razoring right now, I find for so many people is challenging. It's one of the biggest questions that we always get. How do I elevate and like razor mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to kind of natural fall, low elevation? So if you could just like show us the way you get your hand in there and like what you're thinking about with the blade. So what I'm thinking about is when you are dealing with a razor, there's a couple of things. Number one is that you're not going to have um, an actual guide. You're going to have a reference point because you need to bring all this up and I'm bringing this out. Then this is where it happens. So I like to take this little finger here and this thumb to brace this like this. Then my wrist goes up like this, which gives me, I've stabilized this blade. But that's the part that people miss, that just flipping the wrist over. I have, yes, that is huge. Once you've kind of got that, and right. I used to tell people, if you are trying to do this, learn this at home, you know, take the blade out of the thing and then watch your favorite television program and then be like, yep. you know, just flipping it all day because your wrist will start to automatically do it because I want this angle to be real nice. Like, see how it's slightly tilted? I'm always on a tilt unless I'm looking to do something that is more of, if I use the flat of the blade, I'm going to get something that's a little bit more shredded mm -hmm. and that's okay on someone who's like real. There, it's a rare bird, but they do exist. And the, that's the person who's like, I want something really messed up right. looking. I want it to be chewed, like more of a like editorial wig yeah. would look. Often I, I, I advise it maybe for shorter hair, undercuts, yeah. or totally. men's short hair. They're going to wear a lot of wax in exactly. it. But if you're looking for like shiny, yes. smooth hair that you can do a lot of different blow dries and styles with, that might be a bit too much, right? I would definitely be sticking to um, either the edge of the hill, but always on the angle. So this is also what's interesting too when we're thinking about these type of things, is when you're going here and you're working from inside out, the trick is you got to section it from there, but you got to come over here. Now, is this because of like the what you don't want the razor going in towards your hand? It's because I need to work from inside out. Right. I can't, like some yeah. people probably could. Yeah, I've seen more and more people doing it that way, and it does make me a little nervous. Yeah. If you, especially if you're not really experienced, uh, you're cutting towards your hand. Okay. Like the way you're cutting right now, you could easily pull your hand out of the way, but the other way, you kind of can't. And then I'm looking at overhang because I'm really, the, no matter what, this hair is going to go forward. We want that. So I really want to make sure that if this, I don't know, I also have this obsession with the idea of people living in this really beautiful windstorm that like blows their hair and every time it like blows. It's very Wizard of Oz or, or something. You know, it's like a weird, weird Oh, Toto. Yeah, exactly. So if, if that happens, I want to make sure that this is going to land in a really interesting spot. Now, I'm leaving this all the time because I really wanted to keep that link. But I really do want to take some of this stuff back here. And I'm going to take kind of my remain, which is going to be kind of a deep V. Remember that, uh, I think this used to happen in my, I don't really know. Let us hear it. Didn't you do this? Like, wasn't there a, like a V and like, they used to call it men's haircutting, which I always hate. It's short haircutting now. But remember like classic kind of like barbering where you would like leave a V or something? Or did I just make that up? 
You're more worldly than I am. I mean, you know, I've, it, it, there's lots like, of... I was just in Italy. Well, there's like, lots of yeah. reasons to, you know, to disconnect the crown there in a V. Like, okay. if you're going short and you're worried it's going to pop up and you're going to work around it. Or, I, I don't, you know, that's what I would think of for short haircutting. I would, like, kind of... There's a million reasons I could think of. So, anyway, I'm working with this V. Because <laughs> somebody told me about it one time and I thought it was cool. Um, anyway... Um, I just feel like I'm getting like that nice like little part. I'm getting some pieces that are going to end up landing where I want them to land. It's kind of like the prime part of the profile if you want to get like a layered look. Exactly. I mean, depending on what ha the rest is really just the length, isn't it? And but like what happens here determines that profile. And this is where it's fun too because what happens for when you are working with um, any type of hair, no matter whether it's thick or thin, you're going to have concentrations of um, pockets that are a lot thicker and I love working with a razor because it's a visual game too. So does that mean like when you look through the hair you can see like the dark areas yeah. and you're so trying to... That's my indicator to lighten that up and I can do that before I cut the length or after. And now I'm going to broaden my do, do you think it makes much difference? I kind of feel like if you do it before you cut the length you get a little more texture and looseness where like if you do it after you cut the length it... I, it's still a little more technical. I don't know if that's just me. I don't know. I mean, I think that's a really good question. Yeah. I think it's just preference. Also, sometimes for me, it depends upon the length of hair that I'm working with. So if it's like and the thickness, right? Yeah. It can make it easier if it's really thick exactly. to do it first. Yeah. Exactly. You can make a big old section and be like... Pre-lighten it. this is going to be tough. Yeah. I do not. <laughs> yeah, I was calling it like pre-lightening. Pre pre-lightening. Pre Makes I it easier. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, exactly. <laughs> We're going pretty light here. Now, I got all of this here. And I'm thinking about this in terms of like our non mullet version. So I'm going to take this section and I'm going to be really lean. Are you letting your fingertips slide through the hair a little bit yeah. as you do that? Yeah. Does that help you get like longer and longer? Yes, exactly. And then this becomes my other little point. And then I want to just, just kind of uh, what would you say to someone who's maybe uh, afraid to use this type of razor, the unguarded, but is comfortable with the guarded razor? Could they do a lot of this stuff just with a regular feather guarded razor? Um, I think that, I mean, I think that I'm not really in, I'm not really into rules. I'm really what's into whatever works for you. I would say know the difference, and I would also say this. I would say I, I don't love it, per se, when someone makes a choice out of fear. Mm. So if you're just afraid, let's just... Learn. Afraid. Learn to get over it. Um, yeah. and, that's, and then you're in the power position of you just are making a choice on which tool you think works best. Right. I have seen people execute a beautiful haircut um, with a you know, kind of serrated uh, mm -hmm. edge racer. Um, my friend Andy Judd, I don't know if you've ever seen this. Of part, course, yeah. Really cool. Only that little... Well, Andy does your hair, I believe. You know, you exactly, say so Andy does your hair. Um, and if Andy does do your hair, boo, then it's going to be with one of those serrated <laughs> okay? But I like what you said. You know, it, it get some great training, find yeah. a, you know, take a good class. Uh, there's quite a few people out. There used to not be too many, but now there's enough people out there you can find someone to come to your salon, do a class, teach you how to be safe, how to hold it. I love that. Yeah, don't, don't uh, work from fear. Mm -hmm. See, I'm still keeping real narrow. I'm so about again, that. you're kind of taking vertical sections yeah. and then like, yeah, that's an interesting approach. I, I can't say that I've ever done it exactly like that, but it makes sense. You've got a little bit at a time. Yeah. You're still working with your idea of like protecting. Because it would be hard to lose too much length in one shot. Exactly. So vertical, pulling it forward. Let me just come right over your shoulder here and get in on your hands. And then I'm just imagining all of this. So once I've done one section, I'm just imagining my next section. And just, just give in, bring that in there. Bring a little bit of fluidity all the way down to the ends, honey. And you're, I mean, you're being very gentle here. Like on the top, you had a pretty deep, open stroke. Yeah. So here, I guess, because you're trying to maintain length and not get it to be too skinny on the ends. Exactly. Yeah. I'm really kind of, and also that happens too. Like I think sometimes when 
When you're dealing with a haircut that is inherently more uh, textured or there's a lot of sense of separation, over time, you just have to re-engage with that hair and go, what does this need now? Does it need more weight removal or does it need for me to balance the strength out? And so as I'm looking at this, I'm going, okay, I need a lot of places that have a lot more strength. So I'm feeling pretty good about the choice today. You know, it's, it's interesting, like, it's probably one of the hardest things to learn and no one can just like teach to you like how to look at the hair. Mm -hmm. Like you can't teach experience. Like right. people can teach you how to section, how to hold your tools yeah. and what elevation means, what over direction means. But it, until you know what to look for. Yeah. And I mean, you know, it, again, it, for me and you, we both were fortunate to be like apprentices and have to stand there and watch people yeah. like sometimes watch like 10 haircuts in a row, right? Totally. And, you know, do all the little services in between. But a lot of hairdressers maybe didn't have that privilege. So they kind of, they learn their technique and stuff. And then they're out there doing hair and they haven't got to, to learn the visual part. And that's the thing too, though, that I will have to say. I mean, I feel like we were forced, not in a, not in a bad way, but we were forced to have to do that. That was the rite of passage to what we used to call getting on the floor. Yeah. Um, and now that's a different world, right? Like, but I don't think it's a bad thing, but I definitely love, like, I see people who I know that are young, they're out of school, and they spend a lot of useful time in places like these. Mm -hmm. They are looking, yeah, I mean, learning from a digital platform. Yeah, hopefully this is, haircut. yeah, this is taking that, you know, filling that void. Yes. Because I'm the same. I, I, I'm not like someone say, oh, that's, that's bad, bad, bad. I mean, things do change. But I do wonder, you know, how they can get it. And yeah, yeah. you're right. And that's the whole purpose of why we do this. Exactly. So, and, you know, the only difference is, is really kind of the only thing that I would say would be this is that I think the important thing is to build a, build a system for yourself. Meaning this. Meaning we really have... Um, we were part of a, 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 a system, right? So the way that it worked for us was you would assist, you would watch somebody cut hair, you would probably be blow drying, you'd be washing, you'd be mm -hmm. doing the thing, and then you got that one Monday a week where you mm -hmm. had to find the models and do it. And But that structure is if you don't have that, if you're not working in that environment where that is possible for you, create that possibility for you. So Monday are my model days. Watch one haircut that you're really obsessed with from someone that you really admire and love, and practice, practice, practice. I'm telling you. Awesome. You great, great words there, yeah. And well, we've got about a thousand of those videos that you can watch on exactly, our Facebook page. Exactly. So, okay, so you're getting into some product here. Mm -hmm. What are you using? Why? Let's have a close up. I love this product. This is, this is like undressed. A favorite for every person I have ever met in my entire life. Um, I am what I would consider a very heavy-handed hairdresser, meaning I do not, uh, I'm not like this one, I like a lot of product. I like a lot of product. That has gotten me into some gorgeous situations. <laughs> it has gotten me into some tough situations. Some greasy situations. Exactly. <laughs> some so, greasy. Exactly. So this, why I love this, this is like a salt spray, but it has zero salt. I can load this up and it'll feel like leave-in conditioner. Mm. So I don't have any struggles. I have been, I tell this, whenever I'm teaching about these products too, I say this all the time. Um, you don't know this, but um, we were doing one of these together ones and I had forgotten a water bottle to spray the hair and it was getting dry because I was talking too much like I am right now. And I ended up using <laughs> It's to re-wet the person. I was like, I'm kind of into how this is a, like great. So I used it as a cutting lotion before. Not that I think you need one, but. But it, it does, it, it's more than like the typical cutting lotion. It does create some texture and yeah. volume oh, in there. Yeah. But it's not gritty like it's an old uh, uh -huh. salt spray. Exactly. The original salt sprays. Oh shoot, I got There we go. We have power. All right, looks like you've chosen to diffuse dry and using your Dyson diffuser. Yeah. Why, why diffuse dry or hair? It doesn't look crazy curly in any way. But you know what? I like that I, I don't want to blast this all out. And if I blast this all out with a lot of heat, I'm not 
not going to get any of this encouragement and I can diffuse all of this, but I'm also going to be using a hand technique where I'm actually squeezing the hair as well. So it's a lot of getting it hot, squeeze. So this is what, you know, has been kind of known lately as hand drying. Yeah. Yeah. So you, it, it's not using a diffuser because you think she's got a ton of curl. You're just trying to create movement and I'm texture. I'm trying to not blast the hair out. Right, with the airflow. With the airflow. So this, this is going to get it. And I honestly have to say, like, people do ask me about this dryer, and I don't work for them, so, you know, whatever. But I would say if you are a person that uses a diffuser, this is an excellent yeah I, I think you know i do work with dyson oh, you uh, do? yeah and i i, I do have to say I yeah i know i have i i think in the past you know since the dyson's come out we have seen a lot more hairdressers working with hand drying because of this diffuser because it truly doesn't let out any airflow right. and diffusers were always kind of like an afterthought there wasn't too many great yeah. ones um oh my god just oh, popping off. Oh my yeah. god, across the room. Yeah. Well, the extra strong magnet on this one. Uh, it's awesome. Yep. So I love that. And I mean, Dyson, they're, they're just such a cool brand. The first one that they made, the magnet wasn't strong enough, so they made a stronger magnet. Cool. Yeah. So it doesn't pop off anymore. Dawn Musgrave says she used to get a shag cut for years until hairdressers didn't know what a shag was. <laughs> they know now. It, it's been back. Everything that goes around comes Come around. around. For sure. So now you're putting the length kind of in the basket. So this is the thing. I We call this jumping rope, honey. So I'm jumping rope. The reason why I'm jumping rope is the same concept that I use in the top section of over direction. So this has got a problem from here. This has got a problem from here and in the center. So, but I'm also making this, I'm encouraging this texture to happen by jumping rope, it's very loose. Then I can kind of wad this up into here because it's kind of like unwinding the rope afterwards. I'm looking for as much erratic texture as possible. So I've already set that cast from the product with the undress. And now I'm going through and I'm just setting everything in. I don't want to lose this, I want to encourage this. So doing a little rope action is sweet. And I'm not looking, I'm not worried about like it getting a little frizzy. Like that's not my concern. Here it's like, it's like this. Having a little sense of separation and a little bit of frizz. It's, it's cool and it's look. Yeah, it's just thinking about like hair like a fabric, like wool is one thing and silk is another thing. Exactly. And, you know, wool has a little bit of uh, fuzziness to it. I mean, although Katie's hair is, is pretty smooth cuticle, I don't know that we could even call that frizz. No, but I don't mind those little, what I would call angel hair. Angel hair, there you go. Little angel hair. Ain't gonna lie to you about it. And then I'm like loosely kind of moving this around. And also in here, what I might want to do is I might want to like... You're using a little tension there to try to... Move that a little bit out. And tell me if it gets too hot because we took in the heat here today. <laughs> so that's going to help like that adjust a little bit more. Also, sometimes what I'll do is I'll grab this. Kind of pull it the opposite direction. Absolutely. So same stuff. Just trying to weaken it. Yeah, with a brush, we'd try to brush yeah. it in the opposite it's direction. Just it like this. Yeah. Like, okay, well, that's gonna get wild, so why don't I just let that be like that? how it's going to work within its own uh, 
within naturalness, meaning that it should become wake up, maybe doubt a little bit of like undress on it, revert it, and get it all good. I mean, it, it's just, it's very suitable. I mean, it looks, yeah. you know, I know that you, it's uh, not your typical approach, but it's very, very pretty, and I think it suits Katie's face really nicely. I think the strength in the bangs yeah. um, is such a small thing. It was three or four snips, but it really changed the whole vibe. That's the thing I love to see. Like, I love to see a bang that has a little bit of strength to it. Because I'm always asking myself, is it off and interesting or is it just off? <laughs> right? Like, well, I know I can rely on the jump to make the work of this become really cool. Yeah, it's like the, the separation that you're seeing and the way that that's moving. You couldn't plan that. No, it comes from yeah. the root. And you couldn't I don't plan that. Need to overly like you didn't, you didn't texturize there at all. I mean, the no. razor was behind it, pulling over yeah. it, but it, this was just kind of blunt cut with a little elevation, exactly. and the way that that's moving, you just you couldn't plan that, and it'll probably move a little differently tomorrow. Absolutely. Yeah. That's the joy. Yeah. That's what we're talking about the windstorm, honey. Welcome to Kansas. Yeah. Because, hey, I thought you were from Oklahoma. I am from Oklahoma, <laughs> but I live in Kansas. Uh, where are you from originally, Katie? From Connecticut. From Connecticut, not too far. Uh, if you're just joining us, we're in New York City. We're at the Hair Story Studio. This is kind of the, where they create content. Downstairs is the main office. They also have a salon here where Wes and uh, several other hairdressers work with their clientele. Yeah. And uh, in our partnership with Hair Story over the past year, we've had hundreds, if not thousands, of hairdressers try new wash. Um, if you're on our mailing list, you'll get links. And we will also be able to put a link up here afterwards if you return, and you'll definitely be able to get yourself some new wash to try. Uh, which which of the three new washes did you use today on I Katie? The original new wash. So okay. I'm a big fan of the original. Um, we are very different. We do a lot of great weird stuff here. Um, one of the things that you will find very different uh, about hair story and about new wash. We rarely, when we're talking about the new washes, we rarely talk about hair type. We talk about scalp type. So we think of this almost like skin hair, but in the hair space. So what's cool about that is I just figure out, okay, well, if my client produces an oil from day four to day seven, that means that I'm going to go with the original. If it had gone like below that, like if, it, if they had gotten oily, Day one to day three, I would opt for the deep because it's a little bit of a deeper clean. It's got some argon oil in it. It's got some apple cider vinegar in it, honey. And then if she was a person that scalp um, really just not ever really feeling like it gets that oily, um, but needs more moisture, then I would opt for the rich, which would be still cleansing. Um, so we've got rich, we got rich honey, original, we got and deep. And I, I, you know what? I hadn't really heard that before from you guys, but it makes a lot of sense. You're choosing it because your goal with this is to cleanse the scalp, yeah. but leave the hair in its kind of most natural state yeah. and exactly. not overly strip it. So you, exactly. you're you looking at the scalp condition and choosing, sure. yeah. And that's the thing I love. Like when I think about how to explain it to people, it's just kind of like, when I'm dealing with hair and scalp. I don't need a pin to take past that, right? right? Like if I clean my wood roll of acid honey, we have a problem. I yeah. can fall through to the next floor. Right. Eventually, because the integrity would be lost in the hair. So and some typical work. detergents, you're saying they strip out way too much from the hair. Yeah. And since they, there's no detergent here, you're not stripping. Zero detergent and all this one of those things. I'm like, we got one for everybody. <laughs> It's coming together beautifully. Uh, it, Tiana, yes, all of our videos here are saved. If you go to the Hairbrain Facebook page, which you're on right now, and you click on the live button, you can see probably well over a thousand lessons. We've worked with Wes many times over the years. So if you go in and search his name, you can find all the lessons that he's done, um, and you can just browse through.
So that's the great thing here. This is like a library of education. It's available to you. And that's why we have great sponsors and partners like Hair Story uh, that allow us to work with their educators to share. And if you appreciate that, you know, check out what they're offering. It's a very unique brand. They're looking to partner with hairdressers. They have a very different business model. Um, very, very different, where instead of you having to stock all your shelves, you basically become kind of like an affiliate and you get great, um, great commissions on all your sales. Um, and that goes on for the life of that client's purchasing. So for some people, I, I was talking to someone not too long ago, a very busy, successful hairdresser, who told me she made $16,000 in commissions that month off Hair Story. Now again, she's very busy and she gets out there and really promotes it. But three years ago, she wasn't making $16,000 a month. Yeah, yeah. So just something to think about, you know? Right. That really can change your life. But you know, I feel that was one of my proudest moments is when we when everything shut down during the pandemic, we saved thousands of salons and hairdresser businesses because they were still earning commissions. Right. When they physically couldn't hand a product over to somebody. Right. The system was already built for that. I mean a lot of a lot of people scrambled salons and product companies, but you guys had built it uh, probably close to 10 years ago, this same system, and it really kicked in. I can remember that uh, as well in the dark days of our pandemic. Yeah. It's really like, it's so interesting when you're drawing hair like this with your hands, like you have to be patient and it's that last like 20%, you know, like so people put a lot of effort into the first 80% and then they kind of give up. And then they're like, oh, I, I didn't, yeah, but it's all like right now is where you're starting to get all the lift, all the movement. Yeah. If you would have been like, okay, I'm done, Bye. you would have lost it. Patience, patience, Bye. right? Bye. Yeah. <laughs> and that twist giving a great little. Oh, I love you, yeah. right? Jumping rope. Trump wrote. Trump wrote for hard as a kid. Did you have that? No. Oh, that must be a different thing. Yeah. It was like a, we would raise money. It was like, see how long you could jump rope. Well, I've actually never jumped rope before in my life. Yeah. You never jumped rope in no. your entire life? I, no, I don't think so, no. No, <coughs> sorry. How is that possible? If you, if you want to, maybe we can do some today, you know? Later. Yeah. Can somebody bring a jump rope to us today? Yeah. I was busy breaking windows and throwing rocks and yeah. And look where you are today. And look where I am today. Texture looks great. Just the right amount of layering in the crown. I mean, again, you know, a look like this really is about, here's a great angle, the profile that we talked about. Really opening up the face, defining, and then that length, the texture just kind of coming down. Um, I don't love it when people come and talk to me in my chair about the thing they hate about themselves. Right. I'm a big fan of getting that out the door. You know what? Like, I, I totally agree. Like, a very self conscious client for me is the most difficult client. I don't know. Yeah. Right. And so I think that's just a sad state that we have accepted and created. That's actually why I don't talk about fake shape to people. Right. Because it's this ideal that there is one thing that you need to adhere to to be beautiful. And I just think that we could change that concept. And we're really powerful individuals behind here, just by being like, 
Well, that's good advice to just change the conversation and say, yeah, you know, we don't need to hear that negativity. Let's talk about the good things. I just not really into hiding people. Like, I, that's why I always hate those stories that are like, if you have this shape, can I take off? Yeah, I mean, but... I mean, I, that's just, I think, stuff that was made up years ago for magazine articles, yeah. And then recycled over and over again because it was like an article and people would read it because they're like, oh, maybe this will answer all my questions of how I should look and, you know. And it just keeps rearing up every once in a while. And, and you know, some of the cosmetology textbooks had that in there too, you know. But I, I don't think they had the same intent. I think they were just trying to teach something yeah okay I, you know if your shape is face is very round and you put a round shape on it is it going to do this is it going to do that but then i think when it got into the hands of hmm how do we get people to read this magazine article yeah. it kind of changed it's it's and i'm really i'm kind of like you know what i'm like really round let's let it be all round yeah what <laughs> all good, like all the are good. I gotta be me. Uh, he and the voice. Dang. Yeah. This is like entertainment hour. Yeah, but I think it's just so important and people are holding on watching to see the dry because this hand drying, I mean, for those of us maybe who do it a lot, it seems really kind of natural and simple. But if you haven't ever done this, if you automatically always pick up a round brush and figure, well, I got to give it a salon finish and that means blow it out, this can be really daunting. Yeah, this can be, this is definitely, but this is also one of those things too where, do you mind if I jump back and forth between the moderator? Yeah, of course. Go ahead. This is also one of those things that I love because one of the things that when we were developing this business model of giving your client a link to, one of the hard adjustments was like, I don't have the product just to kind of hand over from the shelf. And I tell hairdressers all the time, I'm like, listen, let's all get real with each other for a minute. If you hungry or running late, you know, and get kicked to the curb, your product recommendation. Absolutely. And that, we're always hungry and running we're late. We're always hungry and we're always yeah. running late. And so this was the brilliantness of this was we actually set up QR codes um, for all of our hairdressers that are like linked up with the product. And you can tell your client during the time, <coughs> hey, we was about to get a little bit loud in here. If you want to look at what I'm using on you today, yeah. In the code, because we yeah. all play that game where we're like, it's like the one minute yes game where I'm like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then we're all like, boo, it's been five minutes later, and I don't know what I agreed to say yes to because it's loud with the blow dryer. Right. And so this just seems like a perfect opportunity to fit into that space for people without feeling like you got to add something else into your day. Yeah, so like they could, they use their own device and they just look at this QR code. Yeah, they just scan yeah. it. Because they end up on their phone five minutes after the yes game anyway. Right. So I'm always like, let's do it. So I love using this like this. This time. It's just time that I have that I can use in a positive and cool way. So how do you know when you're when you're dry? Does it have to be hundred percent dry to the touch? Is it Okay. What's this one? That's that hair bomb? This one's called hair bomb. 
So this good. one is kind of like a leave-in conditioner, curl cream kind of vibe. Do you usually use that afterwards or can you use it on damp hair? Or, or after? But you would want to use it if you were air drying or diffusing. Then I just want to cut this product just a little bit with my undrops because I'm really looking to just create um, kind of like some skinny little things here like I'm just grabbing and just like this. So if I create something that is um, erratic and slightly kind of wild, um, what I want to do is I want to ask myself where do I need to create some balance? So you're like splitting those twists up now? Yep. Yeah. And I'm like giving this stuff a good old hug in here. On the ends, just yep. get that separation. You know, what I really enjoy here is that, you know, and I, I love it whenever we, we work together, you, you do such simple haircutting mm -hmm. for impact. It's yeah. like, what's the least amount of moves and steps in yeah. the cut to get where you want to get rather than, because I, I, I mean, again, the same finish, probably someone could figure out three, a way to cut it in three hours and yeah. 78,000 sections. Totally. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just yeah. like what you gravitate towards. If that's your thing, then that's cool too. But for me, like I am kind of, uh, like I don't really, you know, I have the luxury of doing a lot, I mean a lot of makeovers. And so I don't have that thing where I'm like, this is my one opportunity and I need to like- Kitchen so, sink it, put everything in it. Exactly. Yeah. So it's kind of like this. I just think it's like, it's kind of like more, it's a little more craftsmanship and a little less showmanship. And mm -hmm. so if I were to take little micro sections for me, that would be about me. Mm -hmm. Now, someone's taking micro sections and it's really the way that they like to work. It's methodical and I don't, there's nothing wrong with that either. It's just, I know the intention for myself mm -hmm. if I were to do that. I'm like, I, I love that word when it comes to razor cutting because I mean a lot, after you learn the control and the basic concept, the rest of it is, is about the intention. Yes. Like, cause it's like, bam, this is exactly what I wanted to do. Exactly. Like you don't just cut it and say, okay, let's see what happens. It's like kind of, mm -hmm. you have to really be clear on what you want it to do. Well, that's why I loved our training that we have because for me, all you're doing in training is this. You are just learning the, you are just learning to the mechanics of it so that you can eventually trust your fingers to execute what's in your imagination. Right, perfectly said. Yep, that's that's great training. And then if you throw some tri training for the eye in there mm -hmm. by having mentors or finding them digitally, then you kind of know what to look for. Like, it even subconsciously happens, right? You're looking at that fringe and there's some bangs or fringe that you've seen over the past 25 years. They're like all processing through your mind. Oh my God, yeah. And also like, I think the thing is too, it's like, um, building up something that you feel um, like what ins what inspires you in a way and so for me I would look at like really editorial images like Italian Vogue and that sort of stuff and that stuff would be like boom if I can create this effect on this person so I, not to interrupt, but a um, couple questions. So it looks like you're just kind of blunting a few of the ends yeah. here and there. Do you want them to just look a little bit like squarer in a way? I just don't want the weakness mm. of them. I feel like hair will soften itself. Mm -hmm. And so if it's, if it's too weak, I don't, I'm, I'm right. really looking to create something that's more in a graphic mm -hmm. space. And I think that's gonna come from strength. And that question for Katie, is your hair color natural? Alex um, is wondering. For the most part. For the most part. <laughs> I haven't dyed it in a long time. Okay. So maybe some of this stuff down here on the ends. Yeah. yeah.